Hey guys, this is the Journals of Awakening. What's your name? Ben. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> that was not a firm handshake. You call yourself a man? No, I'm a human. <laughs> so I was watching this TikTok today that told me that uh, gastrointestinal issues are a symptom of having autism. I think that's funny. Because the uh, another thing that's like, are you going to change the setting? No, I was oh. just thinking. Where, another, where are you going with this? Another thing that it's... Uh, so we have this thing in our house because we both have like problems and so you know tired. safe foods everyone's got safe foods right what would you think your safe food is what is a safe food foods you feel comfortable eating when you there's nothing to eat tacos <laughs> that's so weird tacos that's so complex you know it's my safe food. i know tacos I know. are definitely tacos and pizza but it has to be ground beef that's the one thing though you know what I mean? Like, yeah. people say tacos. I don't like fish. I don't like chicken. You know? Mm -hmm. Just ground beef tacos. It's true. Or shredded beef. That shit's flame. Oh, yeah. that shit's so good. That shit's flame. I hate eating beef, though. Yeah, I'm a beef <laughs> Every time I eat it, I feel guilty. But. I don't. That's neither here nor there. No. Oh, uh, you've struggled with food your whole life, huh? Yeah. I, I haven't, really. I'm not very picky. But. I'm very picky. I don't, at the same time, um, I don't have the energy to make myself, like, the most delicious food in the world. If I had a professional cook that could cook me the best meals, I would eat all the time. It would be so bad. <laughs> really, my motivation keeps me fit. <laughs> yeah, and we eat whole foods, so make, eating pizza. Well, we try to eat Eating whole pizza foods. takes an hour and a half. Yeah. So Minimal. Minimal. Let's name some foods that we don't eat that are whole, not whole foods, like ramen, right? Ramen. Pan. I don't eat ramen. I eat ramen. <laughs> what do you eat that's not whole foods? <coughs> um, Taco shells? Like tortillas? I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, tortillas. Yeah, that's not a whole food unless you're making it I yourself. I guess you're right, yeah, I don't make them, so yeah, the tortilla. But yeah, you just don't eat much. No, I'm not an eater. Nope. I maintain this dad bod. <laughs> with coffee and tea i guess yeah another tiktok because it's just my algorithm and you're scrolling through and it says you know it's a it's a per, it's like a fake skit right okay and the one girl's like oh yeah i don't i can't eat that it feels weird and the other person's like all right that's understandable and then they're like yeah i have social anxiety i can't really talk to people okay that's understandable and then it's like uh yeah, I take pretty much everything literally. I don't understand subtext, which is like the line, the dotting the lines, you know? Like me. Yeah. And the other person's like, okay, I understand. And then she's like, yeah, I'm autistic. And the other person's like, no, he doesn't, you don't seem like you're autistic. And it's just like. Interesting. Yeah, it's a lack of uh, education. Yeah. People think that the only autism right. is like at the extreme end of the spectrum. Right. When there's a spectrum, and that's why it's called on the spectrum yeah <laughs> i have a real bad add adhd yeah. at this point because i am i do get hyper she do get a little sporadic sometimes yeah mm -hmm. and it's just um this is definitely a neurodivergent household yeah. we definitely are gonna have neurodivergent kids i mean our four-year-old knows everything so <laughs> that'll tell you <laughs> he <laughs> is insanely smart yeah he got into a, a little a disagreement that he claims never happened. Um, That's and, right. You, yeah. never you never told me about that yesterday. He never did? You never did. You uh, asked him about it in the car, like the he, teacher talked to you, and yeah. I didn't even know. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we'll talk about it when we get home. Oh, Ben must not have heard. Home. He was standing next to me, but she talks quietly when she's trying to preserve the privacy of other kids. I'm hearing impaired. He told, she told me that another student, she didn't even name him. Okay. So she keeps the <laughs> yeah, privacy. I remember, she was the same with the lice. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> hilarious. Um, so he got into a disagreement and she said, but it was good because he handled it very logically and reasonably and they solved the conversation on their own because of how logical Connor was. Interesting. Yeah, they were able to solve the problem because Connor knew how to walk through it. And it's something that Connor and I have been dealing with because... And I notice that he hasn't hit me. 
uh -huh. in like a week. D did he hit the kid? No. Oh, okay. This is branching off into something else. Okay. So recently, <laughs> I've been having talks with him. We don't hurt people we love. We don't. Use we don't our hurt hands people to at talk. all. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, don't, we don't use our hands to talk. Nope. Oh, uh, we always... talk. And go ahead. I always tell the kids is. You guys keep hitting each other. When you grow up, guess where you're going? Fucking jail. <laughs> you can't hit people. Like, you just can't hit people. That's not okay. <laughs> well, I think Connor is modeling how I have been sitting down and having really logical conversations with him about his behavior. Mm -hmm. So when he gets in a disagreement with the kid at school, he's able to have a logical... Well, that's good. Yeah, a conversation <laughs> about it. Hitting doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> However, most four-year-olds don't have that kind of logic. So... It's really interesting to see the neurodivergence play mm -hmm. out a little bit. And it's just, uh, I'm in awe. You know, you're taught your whole life. That's nice. Yeah. But if there's something wrong with your brain, you're automatically retarded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a thing. But, like we've said in previous podcasts, is uh, everyone has a special ability. No, you know? definitely. And that's the thing is it's because I don't know anybody a, a who's... A sixth sense. You know I don't know I mean? anybody who's neurotypical. I don't know anyone who... Who's just fucking perfect? The only people mm. whose brains work that way are not awake. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Who would be a person like that? Do you know anyone? No, because everyone, everyone's... Yeah. Everyone has something. Exactly. Yeah. Let, let's take your mom. Humans, That's a guys. good example. I literally thought of her. Really? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Literally, yeah. Wow. So, uh, it's funny because I didn't think of her at first and then it popped into my head. Mm -hmm. I haven't been around her to notice much, but she doesn't seem like she, on the surface, has anything mentally wrong with her until you realize she's, like, been in abusive relationships her whole life. And... Addicted to chaos. Yeah, exactly. Highly addicted to chaos. Highly My mother, addicted to she chaos. She would come over and just dig for some drama. Just Literally. dig. Literally. Like, but when you threw your sock on the floor, did she pick it up? You know, like, what the fuck? That doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So she, on the surface, doesn't have, like, sensory issues. She doesn't take everything literally. But if you dig deep down, she's just not self-aware. She's also medicated, governmentally medicated. So it's a... Well, yeah. I mean, she did that to get off a cigarette. So I don't know if she's still... Medicated. Yeah, well, I I, uh, I had my fair share. You have as well, as far as medications, government wise, to help our I was just disabilities, right? Um, I tried to get on Zoloft because I was having pretty bad anxiety. Uh huh. And two, three weeks into it, when I realized I couldn't do it and I stopped, my OCD kicked in full force, and it's <clears throat> been a learning learning curve since. But I you mean, gotta learn. Yeah, <laughs> I have a. Uh, I've been trying to openly talk about my OCD because I think it's something that I had no idea I had mm -hmm. until I googled it and I feel like you know representation is important so I have had OCD since I was a kid I used to do this thing with my finger where I would like just like go like that oh what it's the fuck did you just do try it what are you doing just forcefully push this bone forward basically <laughs> like that you see Relax, relax, relax. Yeah. When this bone goes forward like that, right? So you just, you're just, you're opening I your hands all so the weird. way. I didn't open play your sports. hands all the way. All the way. They are all the way open. Oh, maybe it's like a hyper extendy thing. What? So look, this is how your hands are right now, right? Okay. Mine go an extra. Oh, oh, like backwards. Yeah, backwards. Oh my. Yeah, no, my hands do not go backwards. Really? At all? At you can't all. force this is your it. fingers this is backwards? Forced. I can get them to go backwards. Just stretch your fingers back. Ow, huh? Stretch Ooh, your fingers back. Now, man. What do you mean? Like this? No, like naturally. I can't. What? That's it. What? Stretch your elbow out as far as it goes. This one? Straighten it. All the way. All the way. They are straight. Dude, that's not <laughs> how arms work. Wow, okay. No, so I no. guess it's not normal. See, guys, no, and I've seen that in a lot of people. Boom, that's my arms. Wow, and your fingers don't hyperextend? And my fingers do not hyperextend. Okay, so I'm very I have perfectly proportionate. Limbs. So when I was in, in gymnastics, I'd go like that, right? It'd mm -hmm. just feel weird. Now it hurts because my fans are cold. But yeah, I, would, say. I remember standing on a balance beam doing that, and my mom asked me what I was doing with my finger 
I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Obviously, to me, I did because it was it was an OCD thing, you know? So strange. That's thing. the first time I've ever seen you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen you do that. That freaks me out. Yeah, you're like, Ooh. you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> you're like, is your, did you break that at one point? No, I now I'm just like, okay, so I, I like at the elbow. I've seen tons of girls go, oh, yeah, and it's like all whack, you yeah. know, like that's normal. I've seen the wonk, you know, but like, yeah. So I was just <laughs> hyperextending. I can hyperextend my fingers apparently, not by much, but wow. it exists. No, but I've seen people, like, fucking fold them exactly. backwards. Exactly, so yeah, I, I like, can't do that. <laughs> like, what about when you pop your fingers like this? What about them? Push your fingers you together. You want to see the popping point? Yeah. You ready? Okay, see, so you can... That's the popping Whoa, point. Oh, you can't push your fingers together like this? Oh, hell no, <laughs> dude. That's as far as they've been, bro. <laughs> and that hurts. I'm like, whoop. <laughs> wow. Did you hear the pop? I hope y'all heard the pop. See, my like, popping point is like... Arthritis hates me. Um... <laughs> I can't because they're just not ready to pop. <laughs> and then you, and then she pops her wrist like it's just fucking nothing, like the people with the neck, like. You know? I can do that. I can do the elbow though. That one's weird. It just has to lock and then. Yeah. Wham! Oh, mine just did. Oh. Anyway, so I have weird deformities. The human too. anatomy. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so I do have OCD. So that was one of those things that when I realized I had OCD, that popped into my head that I was compulsively doing that with my finger, and I felt like my brain couldn't stop it. So Let's do a time check. Oh, 11. We're good. So it was really interesting when I started having really bad intrusive thoughts after I had Connor and then after I got off of Zoloft. And I'm not going to like say what, you know, the gist of them are, but intrusive thoughts are basically when you're like looking at a fire and your first instinct is like, what if I just burned all my hair off? <laughs> like that's an intrusive thought. Right. It's like, oh, like you my see snow on someone's car and you walk over and eat it. No, that's an impulsive thought. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so that's just something. Yeah, that, you're right. You're yeah, right. so intrusive is something you don't want to think, but Zero. it pops into your be your head anyway. So, it's right? like, like, what if this cat bit me in the face right now? No, no. it's more like, what <laughs> yeah. if I bit this cat? That's an intru No, like, <laughs> it's an intrusive <laughs> thought, and that that is uh, goes hand in hand with OCD, <laughs> which is an anxiety disorder. I've had it since I was a kid. Imagine that, you know. My life. Imagine that. Yeah. yeah. You've um, also been medicated since you were a kid. Yeah. On Adderall. <laughs> and see, I was never medicated. I tried it once as an adult and I hated it. It so, literally made me numb to feelings is what I think. So in, in my opinion, Low I feel like pain. everybody does have a degree of some sort of mental illness. <laughs> Look at who's here. <laughs> this cat has mental illness. This is our special needs kitty. Yeah. <laughs> She is, too. She's like, that's much. legit. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important that people know that most people have something wrong with them. I mean, you could have the most privileged life in the world and still have depression. And it's, I don't know how that works because my life was definitely not privileged and I definitely had depression. <laughs> I don't know how it works when you do have a privileged life combined with depression. Like, where does that come from? <laughs> See? Y'all saw it here. <laughs> you see? He ain't doing shit. <laughs> she just... He's a boy. Oh, so she talks I think, a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. So we figured out that we self-diagnosed Ben with autism at one point. And I have what a was hard it, like time maybe a year and a half or accepting so ago? and grasping the whole situation, even to this day. So Because, you know, his dad used to make fun of him anyway, so obviously you have it because your dad used to make fun of you. <laughs> Fuck you, dad. Right? That makes so much sense, though, right? <laughs> My dad's like, really... what are you, retarded? Kinda! <laughs> <laughs> what if I am? <laughs> That's what would he have should, done? I know. Well, you were in special ed. And, <laughs> and they told him it was no he wonder he hated hear. my ass. <laughs> he, he had hearing aids, but I yep. don't know. We don't More know. hearing aids than special ed. Yeah. But really, I mean, not to Damn. say anything personal, but Ben's not the best like reader or comprehender. I cannot read. Or comprehend. I Even cannot. in real life, you're not good and at comprehending. People see it on my, it's embarrassing. I gotta read comments and then sometimes I can't read it. So I just skip it. Yeah, and... So you ever feel ignored? It's because your words are too intelligent. So you're growing up. Ben's just a good example because of how far you've come. Thank you. When I met him, oh my God. I mean, he was a wonderful charmer. He definitely pulled me in. 
But under the surface, he had a lot of problems. Yeah. He was, like, angry all the time, and he really thought he was the best. And, you know, he was, like, super misogynistic. Mm-hmm. He saw women as lower than men. I was a toxic man. I admit that. Yeah, and I didn't I know that, it, obviously, yeah. until recently when I was like, God, you've obviously. come so far. Like, those things obviously bothered me. But and, and women like it because they were obviously mistreated as children as well. You know yeah, I mean? so you were with They women assumed that, that's how men are because their dad was a prick or whatever. Yeah, like you your ex wife, you were with her for so long and she thinks it's normal even still even for to women this to be. Day. Yeah. Yes. And that's because her family's super misogynistic. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's a damn shame, guys. And yeah. You know, I feel horrible for anything that I had done. But, you know, change we all learn. the cycle. I mean, I tried to Seriously. learn. I learned, you know, change the cycle. That's right. Change the cycle. That's really important. <clears throat> but. Now, Break it. five years later, uh, Ben is this person that sees every human as human. Yeah. Uh, that includes women. That includes gay mm-hmm. people. That yeah. includes anything under the sun that he was taught the opposite of. Absolutely. Because and, I realized my teachers were just assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big smelly buttholes. That's what they were. Literally. <laughs> uh, I did this whole podcast with my glasses on. I hope you pressed record. That's all that matters to me. I definitely pressed record. <laughs> it's not lit, is it? Okay. So, there's probably no glare now, so you can see my expressions better. Uh, I think that everyone needs to follow Ben's YouTube channel. Because. I agree. Because we talk about this <laughs> shit. Obviously, we're making a podcast on it. I'm sure we've made a podcast on it before. Not just Ben, but. But mental, mental illness, illness in general. In general, yeah. Um, it's, it's, waking up to see the life like that. It's so overlooked. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's real. I mean, you see somebody with a leg amputated, and you're like, oh my God, like that poor guy. But somebody over here with crippling OCD or PTSD doesn't count. Yeah, absolutely. Just because you can't yeah. see it doesn't mean it's You walk not up bad. behind me and yell, bang, you might get shot. Yeah, out of reaction. Ben's out of also reaction, and that's in, not. You're also in constant fight or flight. Always, like I can't even control it, like, man. Ever. Like, and that's why I'm doing my lives is to help my social anxieties and stuff like that. But it's that. not just social. I mean, you're always in fight or flight. You always, know, you constant. always think the worst. You kids. I guess that's a good thing to work on, just huh? Anybody, yeah. But... Like learning to calm yourself, so you're not always in fight or flight. Reduce your Meditating. Cortisol. Who told me to do that? Somebody said align my chakras today. They said it in my really? life. Really? Yep. They said it in my life. You need to align your chakras, bro. And I was like, holy shit, you're probably right. I need to get, get a good old grounding in it. Yeah. And then I think it was Lynn that said, yeah, you need to ground. That's important. You yeah. should definitely work on meditating. You have this space meditate. now. I don't meditate. Why? Yeah. Why don't I meditate? You have. Listen this- to me. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Literally. No. That's that's me all the time. <laughs> you have this space now. And you get the space, whether I'm at work or whether I'm reading, you know? Uh, you have the space to YouTube tutorials, you know, to work on it. I will do that. And it's, I will uh, make it. It's it's happening today. What is today? The 12th? Or is today 111? Today's the 10th. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. That's not fun. It's the 10th. <laughs> I went to turn on my... Today is 11023. <laughs> Oh, okay. One one zero two zero two. I just want to remember. Yeah, I want to remember to meditate. Because I'm maybe I'm making it a thing. I'm imagine not. if you started meditating mm-hmm. a year down the line. Yeah. Your guard would be so down, you know. You'd be able to handle situations. Like does so that much make better. situations more handleable? A hundred percent, because you've trained your brain to stop and think. To breathe your way through it instead of reacting. To, yeah, training your body. Imagine to going to Walmart in a year if you started meditating. Just hypothetically. <sighs> okay. Okay, you go to Walmart, you know it's going to be tense. So instead of focusing on everyone walking around you, you're focused on yourself. Because... But how do you watch your back in that situation? You don't have to. How do you, I did security for three years, Okay. Yeah. And uh, I lived in the city a lot. And uh-huh. uh, I cannot imagine pretending like there's not crazy fucks everywhere. There is, but no one's out to get you. How it's do you like, know? Because <laughs> when was the last time someone was out to get you then? Somebody threw a cone at my car, man. How long ago was that? It had to be like three months ago. Two years. <laughs> Feels like three months, though. Things happen like that, and you handle it as they come, instead of always anticipating something's going to happen. Because then you can't get your body out of the anticipation. You're stuck. You know, always thinking something's going to happen when 11 out of 10 times it's not. Mm. 11 out of 10, huh? Yeah. It's a pretty high statistic. I know. (laughs) 
You hear it's that, funny, like, stalker? for the stars. <laughs> but <laughs> I Sorry, believe in you. Trevor. No, no, no. I believe in you. I really do. Thank you. Because, I mean, look how far you've I come now. I us. Yeah, that too. I, I, don't, I don't think I'd be here without you. But. See, and I'm never in fight or flight. But that's almost a good thing because whenever something happens, I'm able to react to it accordingly. You know? And I'm able to react quickly. Yeah. So but, the balance. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. like, no, 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 let go of his throat. He didn't, he wasn't saying that precisely. <laughs> no. I no. never think anything's going to happen. Which means when I was pregnant and driving my mom's car and somebody was going to turn right and instead decided to flip left immediately and I swerved around them, I was able to react just like that instead of getting in the car and assuming something bad was going to happen. Or you pulled it left to save you and sideswipe me. No. <laughs> he knows exactly how well I handled that situation. Wait, no, it was he fantastic. couldn't even believe it. He looked we behind us fucking... and he was like, how the fuck did you do that? It was a two-door sporty car with brand new ass tires on and it. And rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive was sweet. It I was like it was... a scene from Grand Theft Auto. Uh, yeah, movie. it was like... Rock, rock! It was almost like I knew exactly what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, it was like, have you raced cars before? <laughs> I, We would have hit him. A hundred percent. We this would asshole, hit he deserved him. to be hit too. Yeah, honestly, we would put, have hit him. He put his blinker on this way and went this way. Flipped a Yui in a very in a very no Yui out. area. <laughs> and I handled it. Handled it. It was great. But I didn't get in the car thinking something bad was going to happen, you know. And yet you get in the car all the time thinking something's bad going to happen. Right. You know. And no, that's, that's absolutely true. That's not fair for you. That's not fair for you to do that to yourself. I do need to learn to relax. Fight or flight needs to go. Yep, maybe, yeah, I, there's been a couple points where you've definitely been grounded. I can pull them out, you know? Mm. Like when you first started growing your hair out and stuff. So do you think that a mental illness can be self-healed? Yes. You think that people can work through their mental illnesses? I think that, well, that's what therapy is for, isn't it? That's a it? really interesting subject i really i, I yeah that's that's intriguing imagine if you believed somebody, in the yeah. government and you went to therapy for your fight or flight i think that you'd definitely be able to work through it but because we don't believe in that kind of stuff we know we can heal it on our own mm -hmm. it's going to take a little longer mm -hmm. but it's going to be worth the effort but i got my third party mm -hmm. right? i don't think things like autism can be fixed because I think that's yeah, that's what I'm asking. A deficiency, right? Like for Asperger's sure. stuff like, like, like that. My like my ADHD, I'll never be able to solve that. Really? But there are ways that I can cope with it. Like you don't think that you can meditate and slow your brain down? Of course I can, but it's not gonna. It's not a permanent fix. Really? For okay. example, even if you practice it for years. Even if I practice it for years. Okay. Because I think that there's always going to be times mm -hmm. where my brain's like. It's because ADHD is a lack of the chemical but, that helps regulate. But here's the thing. Since we all have our disabilities, is it a crutch? No. You can't use it, right? Like, we That's all a, have disabilities, because, right? Yeah, it's you got to use it as a superpower. Now, it depends on the disability, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's always going to be conditions, yeah. right? So I read a book, and my brain is slowed down. I can think really clearly. I take my time. But it, it tapers off, and I have ADHD, and I can use that to my ability to get a million things done, you know, if the timing is right. So I'm not worried about, like, whether my brain is focused on one thing or not, mm -hmm. because I know that really everything's going to be okay. You know, you used to work overnight, and even though our house was a mess, I think now, if you worked overnight, I could get this house perfect. You know, it's all about training. Right. You just need, you need... No, I get you. And, yeah. and, and help. You were a fresh adult when I met you, so. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. But, <laughs> and that's like putting yourself under the wheel because you were I 28. Did, yeah. <laughs> I just threw myself under there. I'm not even 28 We worked yet. so close together, all right, guys? First of all, I was in the meat department. Meat man. Meat man. And I'm yeah. definitely older than 24 mentally. Like I, yeah, you know. and she worked in the department right next to me. What do we, what do we call it? Produce. That's mm -hmm. right, produce. So we saw each other all the time. We worked directly with each other all the time. We became good friends, I think. I think that you definitely helped me realize how to. And you were having problems at home, so. Yeah, I think you definitely realized how to. You made me realize how to clean things, how to take care of things, priorities. Adult. But that's what you get when you have genuine human connections. Yeah. Right? 
in you're so afraid of genuine human connections, but every human connection can teach us something. Why are you so afraid of the lessons? Because mm, I'm afraid I of the loss. I, I know. I didn't expect mm -hmm. that to come out, but it just kind of went yeah. into it. I'm, I'm always afraid of losing things. I don't. And you know why? It takes it's a lot. It's because you're always in fight or flight. Mm -hmm. You always assume everyone's going to leave. On bad terms. Okay, here's well, yeah. a good example. You ever had someone leave on good terms? Yes. Who? <laughs> Dora. So this is a great example. Okay. Because I made an immediate connection to my friend Dora. She has a little baby, and Connor got along with her so well. I got along with her so well, we clicked immediately. And I used to smoke cigarettes, and so did she, so we clicked too. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> it was a genuine connection that you would have been afraid to lose, right? If you had somebody like that. If you have a clicking relationship like that, who was that? Who was that? that my I had bro. That with? Yes, God, that is who it is. Your brother, man, he like ripped my heart away. Yeah, but <laughs> that's the thing is, you you just you think of it wrong. Dora left. She moved, mm -hmm. but she never left because all I can think about is how well she clicked. You know, she she took everything I said really seriously. Mm -hmm. When she needed help with life, she asked me questions and she applied them to her life. I've never had someone take my advice like that. Yeah. And so I listened to her as she well. She trusted you, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's a uh, and she's she I can text her and she's going through things and that's fine, but I'm always going to be here because I'm not afraid of people leaving. They teach me lessons. Now, there's one person where I really wanted a friendship with them, but it was more forced. If you feel like you're having a forced friendship, then just take those signs, you know? You don't mm -hmm. have to be in you don't have to be afraid of loss if you never had them to begin with. My brother's a great example, however, he is family, so he'll always be around. So he's a family. And it's not yeah. like he has That's any That's why it's easier for me to let him in, you know. Me and him we just click. It's also like what kind of lessons can he teach you, you know? <laughs> he's a lot younger than me. He's younger than you. <laughs> so yeah, he's a lot younger than me. He's like yeah. But I, he's fun, man. He's a lot he's my party friend. <laughs> yeah, he's easy to talk to, and yeah. he he does give advice. You know, yeah, he try, yeah like he 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 knows things. But me, I don't know. So I don't know. yeah, you just I'm not a social butterfly myself, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not required to have friendships, but you shouldn't be afraid of them either, right? So even your friend, maybe he'll pop on, uh, in town, right? He's super introverted, right? He keeps to himself. Yeah, but he's got friends. He's got lots. Yeah, he's got everybody loves He's him. got a social circle. Mm -hmm. He'll invite anyone over Very because nice guy. he's not attaching himself to the what the emotions that they provide for him. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's not everybody has to be a serious friend. He told me he loved me. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and him got a pretty serious relationship because that's probably how I am. Exactly. Because you have to love to, me, yeah, or you, we're not friends. You know what I mean? See, like, yeah, right there. It's true. That's what scares you. You're afraid of having like. I give it too much. Every relationship mm -hmm. is going to provide you with something different, right? So. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I give mean, them too much. And I can't help it. Well, like, it's all or nothing with me. You don't get to half be my friend. But that's not true because then you'll disappear. So you got to find. Ghost. Yeah, you got to find your balance too. I ghost. And when I feel a little tension or something, I'm a ghost. See, and I, I'm the same way, except when yeah. I feel tension, I just harbor it into resentment and pretend like it's not there. I don't know how to cut And continue off. talking to them? Yes. Oh, no. Mm -mm. So, like, I'll still reply, but you'll know when I've cut you off because it'll be like, you'll be like, yeah, what's up, bro? Hey, I was just hanging out, man, thinking about you, wondering what you're up to tomorrow. And I'll be like, just been busy, bro. Peace. See, and I've never be experienced like that until recently, which just is why busy. she's always the first person that comes to my mind when I think of people that I harbor resentments for because I couldn't just tell her what was what. And when you, every friendship's gonna provide you with something different yeah not everyone can be a ride or die and yeah. that's how i think because everyone's got to be a ride or die and i'm trying not to that's feel right. that way this is like a biker club yeah, <laughs> yeah that's how we are but it's yeah. not healthy you're wearing the leather <laughs> nobody wants to be a part of a friendship where they feel like they have to be there for you all the time well i think that's what people like me exactly want see but that's called family you I don't have that. Exactly, which okay. is why you dig for it in everyone you meet. That's a, that's which you, why, and that's my kids. I know, but that's that's why you're afraid to make friends, because you don't want... You're afraid of family, but not everyone's got to be serious. So there's this girl that lives across the street with a little baby. And oh, the girl's... Yeah. yeah, and the girl's great, 
I want to be friends with her. She looks right like us. Like, yeah, and every like time she sees yeah, me, she, she sparks conversation and we talk. Oh, I've never heard she her comes talk. and she buys things in my work. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she's a talker. Yeah, like I we have conversations. Know. I just get the occasional. But <laughs> I don't have a con deep conversations because I don't I don't want to ha have serious friendships like that right now. I've got two serious friendships, period. And that's my sister Caitlin and my best friend Kara. Uh, I have another friendship that I'm really enjoying, but I'm trying not to take it like ride or die, but I'm trying more to enjoy it. And that's Kylie. I'm just like enjoying the fun. And so I'm trying to realize that every, everyone offers something different and I can offer people different things. Right. And not everyone's got to be a ride or die because everyone's allowed to live their own life, you know, and the idea that I've always been stuck on my whole life is everyone's got to be a best friend has caused me to ruin so many friendships. Because, me too. Because that's not what everyone wants. Me too. I don't care, though. <laughs> I'm serious. On. I'd rather have no friends than have a bunch of half friends. No, but it's no not friends. half friends. It's a half friend. That's like saying I have 60,000 followers on Facebook. They're not your friends. Not if you don't talk to them, no. But I'm I don't care if you send the occasional how are you. It doesn't count. It's no, not your friend. I know that. Okay. Okay? Yeah. But... It's okay to have acquaintances. No. No. Those are just people that are going to ask you questions later that are just going to be uncomfortable or they missed it. So answer the questions. Why? It's like if you were my friend, you'd know. I mean... <laughs> All or nothing, man. <laughs> I think that everyone's got their own life and they don't always have the energy to give all or nothing. So I'm learning this new thing. Okay. And it's called internet friends. Yeah. I'm very new to this. This is very strange. Hey, maybe that'll get you to have right? real life friends That's that are casual. That's what I'm casual. thinking. This is, this is the internet thing. I do these lives. It helps my social. You know, like I, I can talk to people. Right? Yes. Maybe care about somebody else's life. No, I'm just kidding. I want everybody to have a great life. I just, uh, if I think about someone else's life, I'm going to overwhelm my brain. And, you know, I don't need it. I'm already stressed out. Can you imagine having to talk your friend through a divorce? Just kill me now. You know, I don't want to do that. Like, okay, geez, so that, you know? that's interesting because unless they come to you for advice or support, you don't have to talk no, to them. No, you're their best friend. You are talking to them about this. Otherwise, we are not friends. <laughs> that's not true. That's how I roll. Just, it's okay. I can be that way. No, that's, and that's, that's okay. I'm just <laughs> telling you that it's unhealthy. That's fair. We are humans. I'll we learn. are not supposed to be by ourselves. I don't know if I agree with that. Give me an animal that's supposed to be the, by themselves. Like who? Like like cheetahs. Sharks. That's probably true. <laughs> okay. So they live alone, right? And they only have defenses because they're Fight predators. Fight or flight, baby. Because they're predators. Fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but they're genuinely chill. You know, generally, they uh, most sharks don't like attack. Right. You know, it's only when you hear the. Dun, 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 yeah, exactly. Dun, dun. That that's the only when time. When you hear that, get the fuck out of the water. Yeah. <laughs> so, the way you see yourself would be like a shark. You think that you're a lone wolf, or a lone wolf. <laughs> you think? Yeah, that... you say wolf though, and they're pack animals. No, so I know. Yeah. So no, yeah, but yeah, you say wolf, and they are pack animals, not. Entire race of wolves. Yes. No, those wolves will fuck up your wolf's husband. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like that's just humans. You don't have to dedicate the entire race of humans, exactly. but we are meant to have a village. That's why we live together because everyone brings oh, yeah. their own skills to the table. Yeah, you can't thrive without help from others, and you can't sit here and say that you haven't received help because we wouldn't be where we are right now if we hadn't received. Help. I understand that. That's fair. I'm just saying, like, if I'm talking mentally. Mentally, uh, if I didn't think about anybody else's life, I wasn't exposed to the rest of the world's bullshit via internet, right? And we just lived on a farm. Our lives would be the best lives so in the maybe, world, I think. And so maybe that's just autism, maybe. right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. The, because you don't want to complicate your brain. You don't want your brain to be a bunch of noise. No, it needs to be completely simple. I need so to know what exactly if, everything. What if on. you start meditating... And you're able to have friendships like that because your brain isn't always, like, strumming. You're able to breathe through and just have relationships, you know? 
don't know. That's, that's why we keep. That's why I keep going around. You know, my my buddy here in town. I keep going to his house. You know, every, I mean, every that's really good for you. He gives me a call like every few weeks. He'll give me a call just out of nowhere and be like, "You want to hang out?" I'm like, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. And I do. I, most of the time I say yes. And he's no. not a ride or die. You've just spent yeah. a lot of time together in the Yeah, class. I've just known him since high school. And it's just, I know he's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's just because he doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> but he's you a stable are friend, also yeah. well on your way to greatness. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. Probably I have my own problems, me. but, you know, I don't know how to talk about me. Yeah, and I'm just bad at talking about anything cause because you got me I, all wired. Well, now. because I'm we like, can't relate is the thing when it comes to things like that. I'm a social butterfly. Mm -hmm. It's something I've really honed in, and then I realize I don't have to have very serious relationships with people. So and that's just, something that I've been working on too. And I talk to everyone. I mean, we go into the ice cream shop, and I'm like, "Hey guys!" And they turn around, and they're like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "Hi!" And then you know, you know, like four more people. Yeah. Well. I see it as I'm passionate. I have a ton of passion. You and do. I, and you lack it. <laughs> You're just like, we can all be friends. You, you, you. Let's all have a barbecue. You know why? And I'm like... I have an astrological <laughs> answer for this. You have to tattoo my face first. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I'm a Gemini, Venus, and Mars. And picture them as butterflies. They don't take things very seriously. They just keep flapping along. And Venus and Mars are what affect, like, your relationships and then your overall, like, sense of embodiment. You have an Aries in Mars. Okay. And you know Aries, hot-headed and impulsive and uh, quick to the point. Fucking geniuses is what we are. Yeah, but you have an Aries in Mars, which means that you're, uh, you're naturally going to have that flame. That's never going to go out. You do have that passion. And that's cool. Because I have an Aries rising. So I'm that's passionate right. about certain Twin things. Twin flames, baby. Let's show. We, we did it. Bam. Ba bam Twin flames, baby. That's We're right. opposites. <laughs> and it works passionate. out really yeah. well that way. <laughs> they do. It's really complicated. That's why it's twin flame. Because Very the twin flame relationship is a really, really scary one. It can be, yeah. It's all different. Yeah. And it end, started pretty intense right yes yeah we started super intense I we like, had a baby took her from her husband yeah yeah so that's and a podcast for another day on that note we, we thank, thank you. you peace peace